It's time for High School Football. Presented by TISD and Cox Communications of Tyler. Brought to you by Dairy Queen and Supercuts. Also brought to you by these sponsors. Get ready. High School Football is just ahead. Tyler Independent School District offers more advanced studies programs than any other school system in East Texas. The International Baccalaureate Program challenges students through a rigorous academic curriculum. Mary Lee Jones at MIT calls it the best high school prep curriculum an American school can offer. Education Week magazine calls the IB program the Cadillac of college prep programs. Just one more way, Tyler ISD provides every child every opportunity every day. You know what I like about Texas, we'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're going to go to Clear Helmet so our racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on that. Man, I'm out of here. Fellas, out of your mind. That's not where are you going? Mind. Supercut, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium captains meeting in midfield with referee Mitch Prater. Okay. Tony Bush. You want to talk, right? No, they lost. Captains for the Yellow Jackets are Rockwell. Number four, Wes Cloud. Number 10, Edward Wilder. Number 53, All right. Uh, again, the coin toss. Won the toss by Rockwall. And they will receive, and Lee will kick off from the east end of the field. Well, the referee, Mike, or something does not seem to be working. Uh, we're not sure exactly. We'll try to get that if we can. Uh, get that corrected. Craig Smoke again on our sidelines. Craig, uh, this team has had a couple of weeks off, and your thoughts about how they will bounce back tonight against these Yellow Jackets. Well, I think they got a pretty good chance of bouncing back with Skates, possibly DeHaven, Stripling, Van Zandt all coming back on defense. It's a really big plus for Robert E. Lee because that's definitely been a weakness for them in the last two games. Lufkin really banged them up, and U.S. Trinity was able to run all over the defense to get the win, and I think Lee's got a real good chance with those guys coming back if their offense also plays well. All right, Randy, these are the games that matter. These are the games that count. Two and two, Lee cannot be tested any more than they were by uh, Port Arthur Memorial, who, by the way, is a different football team with Jamal yeah. Charles. Waco High, Lufkin, and then 
Euless Trinity a couple of weeks ago. Micah Johnson, who started handling the kickoffs last week, will kick off. He's also the starting cornerback. Let me go ahead and set the offense for Rockwell. The quarterback, Brett Clough, the, so the senior, who has thrown for 485 yards, his high game 200 against Highland Park. Tyler Dodd, the fullback. Marcus Mathis is the tailback. The receivers, Bobby Taylor, Corey Gaddis, and Andy Tanner in place of the engine, Randall Bryant. Up front, Colton White, Ryan Gilmer, uh, Austin Pennington, Derek Fuller, Josh Steger, and tight end Daniel Eubanks. And here's Mathis from about the five, and knocked down right there at the 17-yard line by Eric Ajiki, and also Nick Mitchell and Randy. That's a great sign when your special teams makes a big play because they have given up some yardage on kickoff coverage with so many players being hurt. Well, Mathis never saw the two outside flank men coming down, and they both converged pretty much at the same moment and just brought him down uh, almost clothesline style. Too. At the 22-yard line, Lee up front. Jacoby McKenzie gets a start at defensive tackle tonight, and Bo Bambry will start at middle linebacker. Ricky Sherfield and Cordero Mumford, the defensive ends. Cole Skates, Dominique Van Zandt, the outside linebackers, and Jason Stripling in at the banded position. They go to Mathis off left tackle for three or four. Cole Skates was there for Robert E. Lee. Zach Eskridge, by the way, starts at quarterback and not Brett Clough. The uh, corners are Quent Nicholson, the junior, Micah Johnson, the senior, and the safeties, Nick Mitchell and Eric Ajiki. But the good news, Skates, Van Zandt, and Stripling tonight playing, which they did not do, although Van Zandt had a couple of snaps against Ulysses Trinity. A gain of four from Mathis. Uh, up the middle against the Lee three-man front. Second down and six, Rockwall at the 26. Deep handoff, Mathis tries to find room and sni kind of snuggles for a yard or two out to the 28. Third and five here. And Cole Skates has already been involved in a couple of tackles. And Jacoby McKenzie, the 6'1", two, 225 junior, and Bo Banbury there as well, inside to give Lee some help to stop him for a gain of two. And Rockwall just comes out and runs left both times. Probably going to set the run to the right side now and try to test the other side where Stripling stays, is stationed, or they'll put the ball in the air. On the well, probably in the air now because Brett Clow, the senior yeah. who's the thrower, is in the game after Eskridge was the starter at quarterback. Eskridge, the junior, Clow, the senior. I formation, two receivers split near side. Clow back to throw, has time in the pocket, going deep. Coverage by a cheeky, and he almost picked it off. And the receiver, Andy Tanner, again, started in place of Brian, who has the knee sprain, was also, but it looked like he lost the ball in the air. Is three and out, which we did not see against Euless Trinity two weeks ago. But this is the lead defense that's now healthy. And again, Rockwell, maybe not the offense that Trinity has. True, on both accounts, uh, it was a nice bit of pressure from the backside for Lee with uh, Cordero Mumphrey on the play where Cloud just overthrows the intended receiver by seven or eight yards. Who pulled up, by the way, as you mentioned on the route? Here's a high snap, and it goes over the punter's head, and he will kick it through the back of the end zone. A high snap to Jonah Longino. I don't see any flags, and that's a safety for Robert E. Lee with 10.26 to go. Now, there is there a flag? Yeah, there is a flag, and Lee should get the ball to me at the two-yard line first and goal because he kicked it through the end zone. You can actually, that's a penalty, and you can accept where the ball was kicked and get the ball at the two rather than a safety. That's a new rule that came in about five, six, eight years ago. It could have been 20 years ago. I'm just trying to act like I know what I'm talking about. But that, that it's a pretty good rule because the, the kicker, had the ball been past the plane of the end zone, then it probably could have been a safety had he just fallen on it. But likewise, he kicks the ball, like you mentioned, around the two or three yard line. And, uh, and Lee basically, it's a penalty, and Lee can accept the penalty and have the ball inside the five yard line. Now, Kyle Rutherford, who is the uh, line, uh, the, the head lines, or the line judge, excuse me, on the near side is the one who threw the flag. And the official again, Mitch Prater of the Lone Star, Tyler Lone Star chapter. Mitch Prater, the referee, Charles Petit, the umpire. Gary Chalk is the linesman, Kyle Rutherford, the line judge, and Monty Florence is the back judge. And they're taking a long time. There we go. Mitch Prater, try again. We do not have the officials mic like we've had before. And Lee, they'll get the ball at the two yard line. And that was the rule that was brought in a few years back. And Lee gets the ball at two. Now, Mark Elam is obviously not very happy with that. And Lee will have the ball inside the one. And right now, Charles Petit and Gary Chalk are trying to discuss it with Mark Elam. And he might want to talk to, uh, to Mitch Prater. 
if at all possible. But I'll tell you this, of all the officials we've done games for, Kyle Rutherford has done seminars and stuff. We had Football 101 right. for Women, which is on Thursday, October 14th, thanks to Trinity Mother Francis Hospital. Kyle's the guy that we use as our rules guru. All right, we won't have time to set Lee, but Walter Simpson and Jonathan Williams in at receiver. Lee a little light right now at wide receiver. Tony Bush, who had the big kickoff return, is not in on the goal line. Long setback is Tyrone Ross. John Giles is the H-back. T.Y. left tackle. He'll go in standing up and takes a shot, but he will score. Touchdown, Robert E. Lee on their first play from scrimmage, and that's the last thing that Mark Elam wanted to see and the first thing that Mike Owens wanted to see. Well, yeah, Owens wants his team to get off to a great start, and they, they're on the board first due to the mishap from the special teams play of Rockwall, uh, setting Lee up with a, just a golden opportunity in the first score of the night. In other words, the snap over the punter's head, Longino goes down for a loss of 26. Now here's Josh Hill kicking extra points with the injury to Cole Skates, and he drills that one inside the right upright, and with 10.23 to go first quarter, it is Robert E. Lee 7, Rockwall nothing. We're back at 60 seconds. To see this sign on your house, put this sign out front. Century 21 Advantage. Call or visit our website. The daily download on Fuse. It's a countdown and free online music. But it's a long day if you're waiting for dial-up. Get Cox High Speed Internet and go to Cox.net. Enter the Get Your Daily Download sweepstakes. Win a trip backstage with the host at Fuse's New York studio where you can win a TV PC package. Activate Cox High Speed Internet service and you'll get a cool Fuse watch. The Daily Download on Fuse, weekdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Download your favorite songs in seconds with Cox High Speed Internet. Go to Cox.net and order today. 10.23 to go, first quarter. Robert E. Lee forces Rockwall into a three and out. And then Rockwall, a bad snap over the punter's head. He kicks it through the end zone from the two-yard line. And Lee scores in the one-yard run from Tyrone Ross. Back deep is Matt Cephalou and also Mathis. Marcus Mathis, the sophomore tailback, who's very active. Micah Johnson, very nice distance on the kick back to the two-yard line, and he will kneel in the end zone. And so the special teams off to a very nice start. That has been an issue because they've been so thin and they have not been able to play a lot of the starters on special teams. And a couple of guys to watch tonight, Randy. First of all, Cole Skates, very active after missing a couple of games. He's had the hip uh, uh, muscle pull. DeHaven resting. They'll try to get another week out of him if they don't have to have him play tonight. But Kinsey was all frisky about starting the defensive tackle. And also Jason Stripling, who is a, a monster for them at that bandit position, the rover position, also very active. We hope to see him early in the game. Eskridge back in a quarterback for Rockwall. Quick drop, throw, sideline pass caught, and that's Quentin Nicholson for a tackle for Lee after a gain of about seven yards on a nice quick drop, and Eskridge gets seven, second down and three. Well, it's apparent that Rockwall sees the opportunity to try to get something more on first down instead of going on the ground as they did on their first possession, they go to the airwaves and have a nice little pickup. Bobby Taylor, the 5'11", uh, 159 junior on the uh, catch for Rockwall, and he has 13 catches for 127 yards so far, and that's about 10 yards a, a, a catch. Now, play clock is down to 15, and Eskridge, the quarterback, looking to the sideline, here comes the center. Colton White, Ryan Gilmer, Austin Pennington, Derek Fuller, and Josh Steger tackle to tackle with Eubanks, the tight end. I formation, second and three. Mathis up the middle, tries to break the first tackle, gets about a yard, and that's it. The Eric Ajiki, the safety, and Bo Bambry there for Robert E. Lee on the stop. It's third and two. Well, Lee has a bit of a size mis mismatch in the trenches tonight, but they do have a speed advantage, and uh, we've seen that so far on every running play. Rockwall has not been able to get much of a break, you know, uh, two or three yards on each carry. And Rockwell, Randy, has brought in mass substitutions, and not just skilled people, but offensive linemen as well have checked in on what could be a full house backfield. Third and two, 
deep to Mathis, off right tackle, and he will be short of the first down. Stripling forced him inside, and 82, James Wilson starting to get much more time now, along with Bo Bambry on the stop, and Rockwell faces fourth down and two. Well, they have more beef, obviously, with the 220 to 240 crowd up the middle, but Lee just is able to fight through blocks and shoot the gaps and knock down Mathis for a yard loss. Offensive coordinator for Rockwell, Bill Bryant, told me before the game he knew his team would have to get some breaks, and he said we're going to have to try to be methodical, and that's what they've tried to do, and they've gone three and out twice. Here's the snap and the nice punt. Beautiful, high, sky-high punt. And Tony Bush back at the 32-yard line escapes the first man, but dropped down at the 32-yard line. Bobby Taylor, the first man down the field, and it's going to make me think of Bobby Taylor of Longview every time I mention that name, who's now with the Seattle Seahawks. 40-yard punt. Nice punt, by the way. No yard return, zero for Bush. And here comes Robert E. Lee now on offense. They had one play for one yard on the T.Y. touchdown. And by the way, Tyrone Ross with that score, his sixth of the year. He now has 35 in his career. He is seven behind the all-time record set by Derek Farber and Keandre Smith and he still has a long way to go, at least he and the Red Raider fans hope before the season's up. Simpson split far side up the gut, T.Y. bounces it outside, makes the first guy miss, and his speed gets around the corner for about two or three yards out to the 35-yard line. Cooper Elam, the nephew of head coach Mark Elam, on the stop for the Yellow Jackets, second down and seven. He also had Corey Randall, number 16, now to kind of push the play out and turn back the block the attempt of the pulling guard on the right side for Lee, was unable to do so, but a nice pick up at any rate for Tyron Ross. Saron Black, the LSU committed left tackle, Sam Banks, the, sip, the, the very good strong puller at left guard. Blake Larman, the starter tonight at center, Brian Culp and Matt Holland at guard and tackling again. Giles and Murphy rotate at tight ends. Here's T.Y. on the stretch, left tackle, 35, first down, close to it. Thought his knee went down, but he kind of fights forward close to a first down at the 42-yard line. Again, Lee's receivers, Tony Bush and Walter Simpson. Cephalu, by the way, the senior cornerback on the stop, and then Peyton Price, the fullback, who has 293 yards and three touchdowns on just 25 carries. And Tyrone Ross, in his career, Randy, before the night started, 3,397 yards. The all-time market, Lee, is 37-42 by Derek Farmer, who's a senior at Stephen F. Austin. Gain of uh, seven on the play for T.Y. He's got 11 on three carries, first down at the 42. Tyrone, the deep back, in motion, Lee. Fullback trap for maybe a yard or two. That's Peyton Price and a flag down on the far side. That's uh, Gary Chalk, the uh, official on the far side. Gabe Rhodes making the stop along with Daniel Eubanks, who goes both ways. And the clock was running, and the officials having to try to now get that thing stopped. Lots of discussions here tonight. Up front for Rockwall, D. Duncan and John Dorsey, the defensive ends. Gabe Rhodes is the tackle. And this does go against Lee. It looks like illegal ship. Corey Randall, Chaz Lilly, and Cooper Elam, the linebackers. They have Renfro, Josh Renfro, and Grant Abston. Kind of like what Lee does with safeties at linebackers in a way. Everett Riley is a tremendous safety, the 6'1", 180 senior. And the quarterbacks, Matt Cephalo, the senior, and Rod Taylor, a 6'1", 178 junior. Illegal shift against Robert E. Lee, and it's first down and 15. Offset eye, Josh play action pass. In the pocket throw, sideline pass through the hands of Giles. And boy, that is so rare. John just doesn't drop passes. Lily on the coverage, the linebacker. Giles was in first down territory, but it goes incomplete. Well, they bear out to the near side, to the home side to make the pass attempt. Just a nice pass was there, but Giles did look down towards his feet just for a split second, trying to walk the tide, uh, tide rope off the sideline and uh, took his eye off the football. 7.25 remaining first quarter, 7-0 Robert E. Lee and Tony Bush and Walter Simpson, the receiver, Simpson in the slot, Bush far side, right in the middle of the field, second down and 15. Josh rolls, quick drop. Now wants to run, 35, looks for the sideline, 40, and will get close to the original line of scrimmage. Gain of about six yards, Corey Randall and Grant Abston were there. 
and Josh picks up six yards. It's now third down and nine. Good coverage that time by the Yellow Jackets of Rockwall. Well, it almost too looked like a device play because he just stood back for a split second and had plenty of time to still throw the football. He just darts through in a little opening that he sees, but it closes up quickly with the linebacking staff from Rockwall headed his way. Peyton Price will check out the fullback, and they go three receivers here with Simpson, Williams, and Bush on an obvious passing down, third down and ten. Uh, Lee has also struggled throughout the year. They used to be able to rely on that middle screen, but people have gotten sick of it so much they're starting to shut that down. T.Y., the lone setback, Bush in motion near side. Josh back to throw. Sets up the screen, and T.Y.'s got a caravan. Midfield, he might go 40. He will score. 20, 10, 5. Well, I just said they haven't been able to work the screen. Randy, they just rocked one up about 58 yards. Touchdown, and Walter Simpson, along with many others, with great downfield blocking. And it was very well set up, too, and a nice play-action fake. And then turning back around, he finds uh, the man he faked the ball to. T.Y. makes the catch, sees the caravan, sees the opening down the far sideline, and no one comes close to him to take it in for six for and the he, Red Raiders. And he set up his downfield blocking, Very which well. was a lot of people down there, but he set it up so well, and T.Y. turned on the Jets. And I'll tell you a little bit about him in a minute. Josh Hill now, the extra point attempt, 13-0, Robert E. Lee. Hold from Preston Hill, kick is up, and it is good. Our score, 7-0-4 to go first quarter. Robert in the 14, Rockwall nothing, back in 60 seconds. Card shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. You know what I like about Texas? We'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Seven oh four to go, first quarter. Robert E. Lee's Tyrone Ross has scored from one and 57 yards on a run. And the screen pass from Josh Hill. And Lee has had more long passing touchdowns this year than really maybe the combined time that Mike Owens has been at Lee High School. Don't forget at the end of the game, the Dusty Rhodes Marine, KTBB, player of the game. Here comes Micah Johnson, very high and also again very deep. Back inside about a yard deep in the end zone. And look at the coverage from Lee. And they're all over Rockwall. Eric Ajiki again knocks Cephalu down at the 14-yard line. And I'll tell you what, he had his choice of five or six Red Raiders to make that stop. Well, and they did just that. Here's the scoring summary, David. Five plays, 68 yards for Tyler Lee, Robert E. Lee. One minute, 15 seconds. And, of course, the 57-yard pass from Josh Hill to Tyrone Ross for six. So Lee defensively, let's mark him again. It's Sherfield and Munt for the defensive end. You'll see Wilson and Simmons quite a bit. Jacoby McKenzie, one of many defensive tackles. Skates, Bambry and Van Zandt, the linebackers, stripling the bandit. Corners are Johnson and Nicholson, the safeties, Mitchell and Ajiki. Eskridge again at quarterback, the big tall six foot three junior. Offset eye, tight end near side. At the 14, Mathis, oh, he got drilled. Cole Skates just drilled Mathis, who, who hits the hole very hard. Dominique Van Zant was there, and Cole Skates kind of frisky after missing a couple of weeks, and he wants to get some tackles back. He has 24 on the year in two games. Bo, Brand Bo Brambury does a nice job, too. He shoots the gap and forces Mathis to veer slightly off course, and the two other Raiders are there. Now they go in the spread offense, and Brett Clough, the senior, who last year threw for 1,018 yards, in the game, they get the signals from the sideline. Four receiver set, and the lone setback, Mathis right next to Cloud. Lee with a three-man front. Snap, Cloud. 
Quick drop, throws, pass, overshoots his intended receiver who then pays for it when Quet Nicholson drills him, the 5'10", 160 pound junior. Boy, Randy, that was a lot of movement to get on the field, a lot of time to get the play for a three yard out pattern. Well, it looks like Rockwall's gonna go in uh, just avoid the run right now. They obviously are not going to have much success. They figured out already. It looks like they're going to go to throwing the football. We'll probably see a really slowed down game now because of this strategy for Coach Bryant and company, Coach Elam. Third down and eight. What Mike Owens, uh, Jay Law, and defensive coordinator Randy Huffstickler were hoping to see, along with Willie Williams and Jerry Reed, the defensive tackles and defensive ends coach, was a lot of pressure whenever there is obvious passing downs to try to get this team back into a focus as they, of course, get ready for district play, which starts here tonight. Triple set, far side, third and eight. Gaddis, Eubanks, and Taylor. Cloud back to throw. Sideline pass caught at the 20 and swarmed over by that Red Raiders defense. Can you see the difference in the speed, Randy, tonight? Bambry, Nicholson, Skates, and Moore as they swarmed to the ball. Nick Mitchell was there. Gain of four, it's fourth down. Well, with the added... Uh replay or actually having the guys that have been injured back on the field. I think that says a lot for team chemistry too. And that's what we uh, saw missing a couple weeks ago was that chemistry factor with Skates and Van Zandt and company. Boy, Tony Bush is way back at about the 35 after that first punt. Oh, they almost got to it. High punt. Hits at midfield and bounces out of bounds, and Lee will get nice field position at midfield, and a couple of players scuffle after the play is over. And Kobe Ray got tied up with a Rockwall Yellow Jacket. 29-yard punt by Longino. Remember the first snap, bat snap, then a 42-yarder. That one for 29. And teams now knowing Tony Bush is back deep, especially on kickoffs. He had the 97-yard kickoff return in that loss to Trinity that made it rather interesting at the end of that game. Lee at their 49 with 5.27 to go. Jason Williams, the hammer, is now in at the uh, H-back on the right side. Tyrone on the left side, and they run that wing back reverse. Jason Williams bounces outside, turns the corner, 45, fumbles the football, and Lee recovers at the 45-yard line. Jason has had the uh, tendency, T.Y. with the recovery, by the way, to put the ball on the ground. He's such a great talent, and Peyton Mullins right there to talk to him, but Cephalou along with Everett Riley, but a gain of six. Well, the safeties had to come up and make the stop. Good lead block by, of all people, T.Y. He's fighting off the other uh, linebacker on the near side of the strong side of the field. Makes a nice block on him, allowing uh, Williams to get outside, and he's the one that falls on the loose ball, Tyrone Ross. And Lee recovered a fumble. Yeah, That's their something own. they don't do much <laughs> at all, especially one of their own or their opponents. Triple set backfield. This is Peyton Price up the middle. He runs right into the middle linebacker, and that's a play that Lee has, of course, had some huge runs. Cooper Elam, the nephew of Mark, is uh, on the stop for Robert Lee. Peyton Price averaging over 10 yards a pop, a 48-yard touchdown. He's had two 40-yard runs for touchdowns, and it's third down and two. He got just a yard that time. Well, a lot of the stop there for Rockwall was the technique played by the linebacker. He stayed at home, covered the middle of the field, and found the fullback coming right back at him with the football, made a nice stop. Huge play for Rockwall defense. Oh, yeah. Down 14 to nothing. Robert E. Lee has a penalty as Peyton Price comes out of the huddle onto the sideline, and Mike Owens is very upset. And I think he's upset with his quarterback, Josh Hill. Not real sure exactly what the situation was, but Lee does call plays from the sideline, from upstairs to downstairs, and then onto the field. Illegal substitution on Peyton Price. And it's now third down instead of two. It's now third down and seven. Well, that might, may change the strategy a little bit. They may want to go ahead and uh, continue to work on the passing game, too. Uh, we'll just see what's coming for Lee. Elsewhere in the district tonight, JT is off. Mesquite Horn hosting Longview. And, of course, Mesquite, North Mesquite at Memorial Stadium in Mesquite. Third down and seven. Josh Hill back to throw. Steps up, sideline pass. Simpson off his hands just a little high. And Josh, on a couple of his passes now, has been just a little bit high to both Giles and Simpson, but was in the vicinity. Walter stretches out, but it's incomplete, and Lee will punt the football at the 48 of Rockwell. He just let him ever so slightly, but he had all day to throw the football. Great job up front from the Lee offensive line protecting the quarterback as he had a good six or seven second count uh, to throw the ball just over the head of Walter Simpson. Mathis, one of the deep men for Rockwell along with 22, and that is Corey Gaddis. And Josh Hill averaging 46.6 yards per punt. Stands at his 40-yard line with Giles, the deep snap. Good snap, gets it off, high wobbly kick. 
hits at the rock wall 20, bounces inside the 20, and oh, they should have let it go, but down to the 16-yard line by Matt Uzell and Rockwall with bad field position at their 16-yard line, 32-yard punt, and Josh with even better, no return. Excellent job for uh, the punter. Actually, Hill was probably going to head down the far sideline and try a coffee corner. The ball bounced at the 16 and was killed. He really has. He has turned the ball over. Uh, He's in, in This year, punting the football uh, very well. I mean, at the high school level, we saw Rockwell's large you know, do the same thing. It's such a pretty thing when you can turn it over. Zach Eskridge, the junior and a quarterback, as Rockwell goes with the rotation there. Two receivers split far side. And they hand it to Mathis. Up the middle, Dominique Van Zandt, and then Ajiki comes in and really forces the run from that free safety position. And a gain of a couple of yards for Mathis, who comes into the game with 323 yards on 96 carries, as high of 85 in one game. Well, they have him listed at 5'8", 162, David, and he looks a lot smaller than even Tyrone Ross. And they're probably the type of team, they have a larger offensive line, they try to get that little back in behind them, and he can choose and pick his hole. Don't forget the 10:30 Friday night high school football scoreboard show tonight. Following our post game with Coca-Cola, Roach's Team Supply, Peter Chevrolet, Earl Campbell's Meat Products and Seasonings, and Smokey.com as the sponsors of our scoreboard show. Second down and eight. Tight end, far side, right hash. Rockwall, quick drop. Now in trouble. Skates is there. So is McKenzie and the rest of the Red Raiders in red and white to get the sack. And boy, Cole Skates just got in his face. McKenzie was there and Cordero Mumphrey as well in a loss of three yards and a sack for Robert E. Lee. It seems when they play at home, obviously they're healthier tonight than they've been in the last few weeks. Uh, they just have a suffocating run defense is what we're seeing from this Lee unit that's on the field. So Clout loses three, third and 11 now from the 16 yard line. They go spread, they look to the sideline. Four receivers set to each side. Mathis, the long setback. Lee with a three-man front, stripling, dancing around. Here comes Cloud, takes the snap. Over the middle, pass knocked down by Nick Mitchell right as the pass was about to be caught by Andrew Gordon. And Nick Mitchell comes over his shoulder and bats it down. It's fourth down. That's nice execution from the offensive end for Rockwall. But as well, Nick Mitchell just reads it perfectly, times his hit just as soon as the ball hits Gordon's hands. He plows into him from the backside and uh, knocks it loose. And another nice three and out for the lead defense. Longino into punt. He's had punts of 42 and 29. Takes the snap. Here's a flag down. And very high, lazy punt. Hits at the 45 of Rockwall, now into lead territory. Craig Smoke on the sideline saying that Jason Stripling may have jumped off sides and this could cost Lee five yards. And you wonder though, Rockwall with a nice punt overall, 45 yards in the roll. And here's what we talk about catching the punt, Randy. That ball hit at the Rockwall 45 yard line. It ends up at the Lee 39 yard line. Yard difference, it's a 17 yard advantage right there. Off sides against Lee and Rockwall will decline that because of the very nice punt and no return. Longino for 45. Lee next week will be at Lobo Stadium in Longview to take on the Lobos, number five in the state of Texas, entering this week's game against Horn High School up in Mesquite and Hanby Stadium. Lee last year won at Longview and lost here 22 21 on that two point conversion intended for Brandon Pettigrew that was over his head in the back of the end zone. Game from Longview was come from behind because they were down 14 3 at the half and just outplayed Longview in the second half and pretty much whipped them in their own field. And that'll be a nice classic uh, matchup next week for two really fast football teams. And uh, Longview's had their own injuries as well. They lost Gordon Freeman for yep. the year last week, a huge blow. Tight end and yeah. safety, is yeah, that right? Yeah, he's been playing mostly a tight end, but he's uh, a great target for his little brother. Quincy Grant, their quarterback, yeah, who's been hurt, hurt really since last year, tried to come back and hurt his knee again. But Carlin Freeman had an unbelievable day to Malcolm yeah. Kelly here at Rose. First down, Williams in motion. This is up the gut. Tyrone slips and falls at the 40. Boy, he had a huge hole. Chaz Lilly gets the credit, the senior middle linebacker, in on 22 tackles this year. T.Y. gets three, and it's now second down and seven. And he's limping again. Yeah. Told Tyrone, I said, Tyrone, you got, you know, you're a guy that, you, you know, that ankle's going to be like that for quite some time. He saw the shift of his line moving everything to the right, and at the last second, due to his greater patience this year, he saw something to the left and just slipped and fell. Walter Simpson near side, Giles in the H-back. 
Split backs behind Hill. Josh, play action, rolls to the near side. Now has time going. He's got a man. Giles caught it at the 36-yard line. What a nice throw. Great protection. But John Giles with a tremendous outstretched catch at the 35-yard line, a gain of 23 first down. Well, it was a pinpoint pass, very high. Only Giles could have gotten to it. He makes a nice a curl out pattern, 20 some odd yards down the field and reaches up high and gets one foot in bounds and that's all we need in the high school level, first down. First down, Lee, he did. He got that back foot, it dropped down on the ground. A very nice job. Boy, Josh has got some zip on that thing tonight. This is the wing back reverse to T.Y. Tries to bounce it outside and he will not do so and takes a shot at the 36 from Grant Ashton. Their bandit or Rover, who plays the same kind of position as Stripling does for Robert E. Lee, and they ran him down as Tyrone could not get the corner. It's second down and 11. Well, pulling Banks was pulling to try to put a block on him and just missed him, it looked like, or great defensive play by Ashton as he just fought off the blocker and reached out with one arm and pulled down Tyrone from behind. Minute 20 to go, first quarter. 14 to nothing, Robert E. Lee on a one-yard Tyrone Ross touchdown and a 57-yard pass from Josh Hill on the screen for a touchdown. Second 11, offset off. This is a play-action bootleg, and Josh goes near side, now cuts it against the grain and will get nothing. He should have stayed outside. That play normally, Cooper Elam, by the way, on the stop, did a great job of staying where he was supposed to stay. That play normally is so wide open. I think Josh is not used to having somebody in front of him, and he tried to cut it up. I think he could have gotten five or six more going outside, and I bet Mike Owens and Dalwin would rather him not go against the grain against those big uglies at the defensive side. Well, you give credit to Chaz Lilly, number nine. He was ahead of the play and was going to turn Josh back inside at any rate, and he helped his defense. Third down and ten. Williams far side for Lee. Simpson near side, Josh back to throw. Sideline pass, Simpson, oh, what a diving catch at the 13, make it the 18 yard line. Only Walter can make plays like that, the circus catch. And again, a first down, 17 yards for Robert E. Lee inside the 20 of Rockwall. Well, that takes a lot of work and, and practice and timing and Josh has it down right now. Passes a little high along the sideline, but give credit to Walter Simpson, great hands on that reception. 21 seconds to go, first quarter. Bush far side, Simpson near side, Murphy the tight end, and now Simpson will go far side in the slot. Lone setback is Tyrone Ross. Lee is up 14. Josh stretch play, Tyrone gets a block, Simpson at the 15, down to the 10, just shy of the first down, and that will end the first half. Safety, Everett Riley on the stop, gain of nine, and that ends the first quarter with our score. Robert E. Lee 14, Rockwall nothing, back in one minute. Man, are we gonna take every lap full speed? Yeah! Are we gonna trade paint without fear? Yeah! Are we gonna brush our hair 100 times a day and condition after every shampoo and choose the right hair color to match our skin tone? Tim? Terry, I'm an autumn. I'm a spring. Now let's go out there and win one! Supercut, proud sponsor of this Bradshaw Racing. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Represent your team like never before. On the field, on the court, it's all in our store. The spirit of your team, the season of your dreams. Looking for the victory, we've got what you need. Your one-stop sports shop. Tyler Athletics. Your one-stop sports shop. Tyler Athletics. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College. Living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. Education is a priority in Tyler. With new growth and increasing student enrollment, the Tyler Independent School District study the condition of its facilities. Focusing on the most critical needs first, the District Board of Trustees voted unanimously to call for a bond election for a portion of these needs. The election affecting the children of Tyler is November 2nd. Visit www.tylerisd.org and click on Bond 2004 
or call 903-262-1064. We start the second quarter at Trinity Mother Francis Row Stadium in Tyler. Robert E. Lee, second down and two at the Rockwall 10. After the nice catch by both Giles and Simpson to keep the drive alive, T.Y. got eight. It's second down and two with, the again, the start of the second quarter, 14 to nothing, Robert E. Lee. Well, Lee's run, uh, run, pass, run, pass, run, and here we go, see if they uh, follow suit and throw the ball towards the end zone. Andrew Bailey, the junior at center now, as Blake Larman gets a breather. Murphy, the tight end, far side. This is Tyrone, 10-5, touchdown. Boy, that looked easy. Kerry Ainsworth, you just mentioned that offensively, although it's 14 to nothing, that they weren't all that sharp. Well, they didn't have to go but one yard the first drive, but that was pretty impressive. Yeah, it looks like they've been off a couple weeks, but uh, they're getting crisp. They're coming alive. Tyrone wasn't even touched till he was in the end zone in his third touchdown of this game, Randy. Well, give the credit to Banks pulling also the whole right side. The receivers flushed out the secondary towards the middle and the Banks with a nice pulling block. And as you mentioned, he had so much daylight, I don't think he knew what to do. Right. And we finally saw the little hole at the two and pumped right through it. Four seconds into this second quarter, and Robert E. Lee kicks to point by Josh Hill is good with the East Texas Fair going on in the background. The band playing, and Robert E. Lee up 21-0. One play into the second quarter. We're back in 60 seconds on News Talk 600 KTBB. Here's a question. If you needed your insurance, who would you call? Not the name of the company, but the name of the person. You've got two seconds. Coming up blank, you may want to consider Allstate. You'd have a local agent you can count on, a licensed professional whose name you know, not just a number. You deserve a relationship with a real person. For all your insurance needs, call the McIntyre Insurance Agency in the Albertson Shopping Center. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're gonna go to Clear Helmet so racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on that. And I'm out of here. Fellas, you're out of your mind. That's not where are you mind. going? Supercuts, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? Hi, I'm Becky Martin. I've been with TISD for 19 years, and I teach English here at Robert E. Lee, and you're watching TISD Football on Cox. 21-0, Robert E. Lee with four seconds gone, second quarter, as Tyrone Ross has now scored from 1, 57, and 10 yards. Randy, very impressive start for him. Yes, sir. Six play, 61 yards for Robert E. Lee and 237. And uh, he veered off right tackle, but no one touched him until he was in the end zone for six. Kicking off Micah Johnson, who has brought an extra something to this, giving Josh Hill a break. And Cole Skates again nursing that pulled muscle in his hip, not kicking right now, although he has had a great career as a kicker. And probably ends up getting recruited as a kicker. But he's a heck of a linebacker, too. This is Mathis drops the ball at the five, and he's in trouble inside the 15. And boy, I think Robert E. Lee's Willie Williams the special teams coach, defensive ends coach, and Jiki again was there, and so was Takiri in Cuba. Willie Williams said, hey, Smokey, we're going to put on a show with our coverage teams, and they have so far. And they just get down the field so fast, David, from both sides. The wedge tries to block in the middle, but you've got a problem to contain such speed coming down at you. And as soon as he grabbed the ball at the seven, he was there was uh, Ijiki right on him, three yards well, left. Eric Ijiki and Stripling, remember, Lee has had guys like Martel Van Zandt, Ja'Kyron Bailey in the past who were great wedge busters and that's exactly he didn't even have to have to go to the wedge Eskridge the quarterback for Rockwall and they've got to wonder what in the world down by 21 deep hand off to Mathis does hurdle a guy that's not even Mathis as a first down carry at least close to that Kendrick Lawrence the 5'10 senior who's carried for four times 25 yards this year picks up nine there Micah Johnson was there, and Bobby Osborne, number 66, as they or 68, the big senior, 247-pound defensive tackle. Well, Rockwell comes out in a, yet another offensive set. This is more of an eye. They have the multiple wing tee, and then we saw the spread. So they've thrown their whole arsenal, I would think, out in terms of uh, formation. Lee with a lot of backups in the game right now. Simmons, Osborne, Wilson, Bambry, although he started again, linebacker Lance Heap and to carry in Cuba, all in the game to give the starters a rest. 
looked like some motion, but there's no flag. Gain of about three and a first down. Again, that looks like uh, Lawrence, Bo Banbury, and Lance Heap at the bottom of the uh, pile, along with Justin Simmons, and a gain of four and a first down. They run right side, get a little push from Derek Fuller, their right guard, and that's just enough for Lawrence to scamper off his rear for the first down. Longview is leading at the end of the first quarter at Hanby Stadium over Mesquite Horn, 14 to nothing. Marshall in a 4A game over fourth-ranked Kilgore in the second quarter in what should be a great one, 7-0. George Faber in the game now, middle linebacker for Robert E. Lee, number 33. His dad is in charge of, the, I think, the fine arts department. Isn't that right, Craig? At uh, TISD. First down, Rockwell. Their first of the game. Correct. From the 25-yard line. Eskridge, oh, nothing there. Cole Skate shot the gap and to carry in Cuba cleans it up. Loss of three yards. And that time Lawrence doesn't get the ball maybe a foot after the handoff and he loses three. See, that's just the element that they needed two weeks ago at Trinity. Exactly. They weren't able to get in there and disrupt the delay or the draw play that was just killing Lee to the outside. And no one ever the was hit in the backfield. No, I mean, it was, and, and again, it was a lot of kids playing hard, but there was no penetration at all. Clow now in the uh, shotgun for Rockwell. Trip set to the far side, left hash mark as they come from the east side of the stadium. Kendrick Lawrence remains the lone setback. Taylor split near side, second down 13. Clow with the shotgun snap, throws, tipped in the air, and oh, James Wilson, had he found where the ball was, could have had himself a pick, but big James with a tip. The defensive end at 6'1", 207, and it's third down and 13. You know, what you bring with skates and with Van Zant and Stripling is just a totally different level of play, a totally different animal. And uh, we, we see it here, and I think it would have been apparent two weeks ago, but that's the pass. So. Robert E. Lee rotates as many as six different defensive tackles. Now Trevor Reed in the game for Lee at one of the linebacker positions. Bambry back in the game as well. Lee goes in their nickel, third and 13. Gabriel Lacey is the tackle now. Shotgun, Cloud wants to go over the middle, now wants to find room to run. Now in trouble, scrambles away, wants to throw it over the middle, pass incomplete at the 40-yard line. Dominique Van Zant with a hit on Cloud after he threw the ball in coverage for Lee. Mitchell, Cuba, and Lance Heap is fourth down incomplete pass. It's just a great bit of uh, defensive coverage downfield. Cloud had time at first, and then he was chased out of the pocket by Wilson. And he had to come to the near side, and that's when three or four red shirts are there to converge on him. Just as he releases the pass, he takes a blow to the midsection. Fourth down and three. This is a drive where they picked up their first first down, but doesn't go anywhere after that, after the big play by Skates. Lee almost blocked the punt. Cordero Mumphrey almost got the block and hits it midfield and bounces around inside the Lee 45 down to the 41 yard line and Lee brought a lot of people that time 924 to go first quarter 37 yard punt from Longino and the Red Raiders get the ball at their 41 up by 21. They're going to try to resume just to do what they've been doing so far, throwing the ball. They've got a little bit more success on the on the pass drive running it, but the, the crisp passing the night of Josh Hill, the great blocking, and the nice nifty running from the tailback Tyrone Ross have been the key thus far. 9.24 to go, 21-0, Robert E. Lee. Tyrone Ross is the lone setback. Peyton Price, the H-back with Giles in the hip of the tackle, Ryan Davenport. Peyton up the middle and they've read that thing out a couple of different times tackle made by 16 Corey Randall the junior so the one thing Rockwell has done is stop that what they call fold or tear when Lee runs that fullback trap and also the fullback wingback reverse at second down and 11. Well, that's just nice technique coaching from coach Elam and his staff defensively T teaching his linebackers to cover a space and, and not allow them to get outside on misdirection, so they're not being fooled thus far by misdirection. Craig Smoke will have Mike Owens at halftime with his thoughts in the first half. Randy Johnson here in the booth along with Kerry Ainsworth and Justin Brinker, our producer. Mike LaRue, the engineer. Second 11, cluster formation far side for Lee. Oh, no, it wasn't. Looked like it was. Josh Hill steps up in the pocket. He went down, or did he? No, he did not. Giles makes the catch. Nice tackle in open field that time by Abston. I thought Josh may have touched his knee, but the uh, play continues out to the 48-yard line, and they pick up about nine yards on what looked like nothing. Well, he lost his footing just for a split second and kind of slipped, and he, he was able to put his left arm down to, to uh, brace himself, and he kept his footing, looked back to the near side to a safety valve. I, they might have been going for the screen play, but it was broken up nicely with a nice rush from Rockwall, but a nice catch and a pretty nice pickup. 
under eight minutes to go, and it makes it a much more manageable third down with third and three at the 48-yard line. Double wing set. Up the gut, Peyton Price, no, as T.Y. cuts it up. First down, midfield into Rockwell territory, and that was only a three or four yard run, but a very nice shot of power from Tyrone's lower body as he broke a tackle at midfield. Banks on the nice block. Stephen Christian, excuse me for Lee, uh, Corey Randall made the stop for uh, Rockwell, but Christian in the game now for Sam Banks at left guard. With the fake to the midsection of Price running up the middle, really uh, sold the defensive tackles in the middle linebacker, so they had to stay at home, and the nice bit of running outside for the first down for Tyrone. Seven and a half minutes to go, first half. This is Peyton Price, and this time he does break it. 40-35 first down. Trying to find Peyton Price, and he got loose in a great block by Stephen Christian and guard Brian Culp. The two guards that time with a seal block, and Peyton Price for 21 yards first down. Last open a nice hole, and Price has that speed and that extra step up, that engine always running. He powers his way up the middle and tries to pull two other Yellow Jackets with him before they bring him down. Chaz Lilly back in the game for uh, Holdsworth, the other linebacker who was at the middle. Lee now in another drive at the 26-yard line. Tyrone stretch right tackle, 25. Tough run, knocked out of bounds right there by Cooper Elam. We've called him quite a bit. The six-foot junior, Cooper Elam, in five games at 59 tackles and scored a touchdown last week in a goal line situation, and T.Y. picked up only about a yard. They do a better job of stringing the play out, does Rockwall. They have the defensive end does a nice job fighting off the block up front from Lee uh, and not a, letting uh, T.Y. to get outside. Second down and nine, Robert E. Lee. T.Y. maybe gets two in the paper because of that, just inside the 25. Steven Christian and Brian Culp again, the two guards, Holland and Black, the tackles for Lee, and Blake Larman is the center, number 51, offset on. Second down, nine, Josh. T.Y. up the middle, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. His fourth touchdown of the first half. Saron Black makes a big pull block, and Robert E. Lee scores again. 7-0-1 to go, and I've never seen T.Y. with so much explosion as he has tonight. Well, he finds a seam, and he did just that right at the uh, point of attack and gets right outside. And give credit also to Tony Bush making a nice block down the field at around the 7 to help get him on in the end zone. 7 on one to go, and Robert E. Lee in dominating style, up 28 or 27 nothing with the extra point to come. Deep snap is Giles and Preston Hill, the brother of Josh the junior, backup quarterback is the holder. Snap, hold, kick up, and it hits the upright and goes through. 7 on one to go, first half, 28 nothing. Robert E. Lee, we're back in 60 seconds. Hello, my name is George Faber and I'm the Visual Performing Arts Director for TISD. It is my pleasure to serve as the administrator of many fine award-winning programs in our district from kindergarten through high school, as well as work with many highly qualified teachers. Our main goal is to help students receive a well-rounded education of mind, body, and soul to promote the integration of arts into math, science, reading, English, and social studies. You're watching TISD Football on Cox. You know what I like about Texas? We'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Micah Johnson's been a busy guy, opening kickoff for Lee and four more since that time. 28 to nothing. Robert E. Lee was 7 one to go in the second quarter, and Lee with a very impressive drive. Seven plays, 59 yards and 221. Ross takes it to the final 24 for six. Here's a line drive kick. It's Cephalou at about the two. Looks for the wedge, 10, 15, 20, and Lance Heap was the first one to hit him. But again, give credit to Faber and Colby Ray. Uh, Matt Uzel, excuse me, downfield to bust up the wedge to give the secondary phase of players there, making the tackle at the 20-yard line. 6.53 to go. Hey, Longview leading Mosquito in 14-0 second quarter, but we've been told there's a lightning delay going on. 
in that game. Again, it uh, will be about a half an hour delay with about eight minutes to go in the second quarter with Longview leading that one 14 to nothing over Horn High School in Hanby. And that weather, of course, could be coming our way. It is expected to be here, and we'll update you on if we need to. Zach Eskridge, the quarterback, I formation, Rockwall at their 20-yard line. Play action, no, nope. yeah, rolls to his right. Receiver over the middle, throwing deep, and he's got a man, but Micah Johnson, oh, what a tremendous catch by Rockwall's receiver, Tanner. Micah Johnson thought he had lulled Eskridge to sleep, went up for the interception, mistimed his jump, and what a great catch by Andy Tanner for a gain of 39. Wow, just, just a great bit of athleticism. Micah did go up for it, and he, you know, just all right off, off his fingertips. Tanner stays with the play, makes the catch, and is brought down immediately from behind. And of course, Longview with that Malcolm Kelly at wide receiver will notice that one on film. But again, Micah had the coverage. Oh, yeah. It was a nice throw, by the way, from Eskridge. It was a nice job by Micah to lull him. He just mistimed his jump and a great catch by Tanner. First down and 10. Rockwall in lead territory for the first time. Play action again, Eskridge rolls out in trouble, sacked. Back at the 44-yard line, Cordero Mumphrey was there, and we talked about that, Randy, that Lee wanted to get a bunch of sacks if they could, and Mumphrey just picks one up. Well, he just keeps containment. He fights his blocker off and is there right in the way of Eskridge, who uh, at first with a good play action was going to look like he's going to stay in the pocket, but he gave up on his receivers pretty quickly, and it's probably due to the pressure from uh, several Robert E. Lee. Mumphrey players. now with a sack and a half, and uh, – Right there as he ran right into him that time. Gabriel Lacey is now in a defensive tackle with Sherfield and Mumphrey, the defensive ends for Robert E. Lee. We'll also see James Wilson quite a bit. In fact, I think Wilson is in right now and not Ricky. You know, Ricky Sherfield is in the Second down, 13. Rockwall at the 43 of Lee. Trip set to near side. Eskridge in the shotgun. Play clock is at one. Draw play, Mathis. Left tackle, that's Lawrence, excuse me. And he gets about seven or eight yards. Down inside the 35, Nick Mitchell in the stop for Lee, the nice tackle, but it brings up third down and three, and a nice pickup that time of eight yards. That's their best running play of the game so far. They just get a nice surge off the line, driving Lee's interior back. This kid seems to have a little more punch yep. than Mathis does. And in fact, if you look at the size, Randy, Lawrence is 183, Mathis 162, and Mathis, they put him in the middle a couple of times and he didn't go anywhere. Third and three. Trevor Reed also in at linebacker for Robert E. Lee as they give Cole Skates a breather. Johnson and Nicholson remain the corners. Lee with a five-man front with the two safety Stripling and Mitchell. Eskridge runs the bootleg outside first down, hurdles a man and takes a shot, but he has a first down at the 29-yard line. Eric Ajiki and Dominique Van Zandt there for Robert E. Lee, but a nice little play that time. And that's also another one. Colin Freeman runs that quite a bit for Longview. Yeah, that's more of an option that Longview runs. And quarterback just took right off and followed his two backs in front of him, set up in a split backfield. They took off his lead blockers, and he follows them for the first down. Nice drive here from Rockwall, which they've shown nothing at all on offense. And it's been a frustrating start for Mark Elam and his team down 28 to nothing. Now Lee's defense wanting to hold on to the shutout here in the first half, if at all possible. Eskridge, the quarterback, this looks like this could lead to a, nope, he got the team out of the huddle. Play clock is at 10, 4.18 to go, first half. Triple set, near side, long setback is Lawrence. Snap, Lawrence got about seven, eight yards, and again, very tough run. And they found something, Eric and Jiki on the stop for Robert E. Lee and Lawrence very high, almost Roger Craig-like type running, and he picked up nine yards against this lead defense. And he runs straight up pretty much, but he keeps both hands on the ball and churns away with his legs, and he keeps his head up as well, helping him uh, to see the holes. And Lee not getting penetration because maybe somewhat confused on what Rockwell might be running here. Second down in a yard with 3.40 to go, and Rockwell trying to get some points on the board before the first half. Back in the game for Lee, Joe, Jacoby McKenzie, the 6'1", 225 junior defensive tackle. Eskridge has got a nice drive going here. Lawrence, the setback next to him. Run that same play the opposite way. First down inside the 20. Van Zandt on the stop for Lee along with Bo Bambry, but he got two yards, he needed one, and it's first down Rockwell at the 19. They're just simply driving Lee off the ball and winning on this current drive 
pushing Lee right down the field and uh, picking up yet another first down. Lawrence now 29 yards on five carries. Rockwall on the game with just 13 yards because remember they lose 26 on the bad snap, which is kind of weird on the bad snap, but it does go as minus 26 yards. 3-10, clock running. Eskridge in the shotgun. Taylor near side. Lawrence up back at the 19-yard line. Lee will blink, bring the blitz. Stripling comes in, and then they got it. Dominique Van Sant, and I think Trevor Reed also, and that's the third sack for Robert E. Lee, and they brought everybody that time, and it's now second down and 12. Well, the quarterback pretty much just gives up on the play and just looks to, to try to not lose much yardage. He takes off immediately when there's three or four red shirts co converging upon him. So Eskridge that time will lose three on the sack. Second down and 12. James Wilson and Justin Simmons, the defensive ends for Lee. Here comes a whistle and a timeout. 2.22 to go first half, 28 to nothing. Robert E. Lee, we're back in 60 seconds. To see this sign on your house, put this sign out front. Century 21 Advantage. Call or visit our website. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. All right, here are a couple of scores at 12-5A. This one 28-0 lead. Mesquite now leading North Mesquite in another game that's got lightning delay in the second quarter, 14-0. Second down at 12, Eskridge in the shotgun. Three receivers set far side. Wants to set up the middle screen. He's got Lawrence. Oh, what a nice play from behind by James Wilson, who saw the screen, turned around, recognized it, and stopped what could have been a bigger gain for a gain of just four. And that's just seeing it so much in practice and being able to identify the movement of the quarterback and watching the trailing tailback or even the tight end in this case. And it was the tailback just following him, and he did a great job of snuffing it out, and uh, that comes with all the repetition in practice too. So a gain of four. Eskridge is actually three for three in this game for 50 yards, including the long 39-yarder. So third down and nine, and Rockwall with under two minutes to go in the first half, down 28. Third and, well, actually, yeah, nine yards of the, the 18 of Robert E. Lee. Triple set now near side. Lee with Nick Mitchell threatening the blitz. They run that fullback delay, and this time Lawrence eating up, and Nick McLean who's checked in 75 on the stop for Lee as he did a nice job of making sure there was no room to go, and also a bunch of other Red Raiders in the stop, and there's a player down. Yeah, there's a player down for Robert E. Lee. No, is there a fumble? fumble? There is a fumble. Craig Smoke, did you see what happened? No, I wasn't able to get a good look. You talked about uh, number 75, Nick McClain, who came in on defense, and I think he was able to knock the ball loose and also recover the football. I could not understand what they were doing, and boy, Robert E. Lee, Mark Elam is chewing on his tailback that time. Lawrence, they had a nice drive going, Randy but it ends up with a fumble, and that's kind of been the story of the Rockwall season, and the league gets a turnover. One thing they have to do the rest of the way, district, and if there's anything else after that, is turn, force, more turnovers, and they don't recover many fumbles, but they did there with McLean. Lee now from their 18, Jason Williams, 25-30, breaks a tackle, 35. 40, cuts it against the grain, into the Rockwall territory. Jason Williams bringing the hammer down to the Rockwall 46 yard line and he turned the corner and Sam Banks with a big block gain of 37. <laughs> Just like that, Lee has the ball right back in Rockwall uh, territory with a splendid run and some wow. nice blocking. Williams, William shows his talent 
trailing outside to the near side of the field and it finds a break around the corner past two Rockwall defenders and gets down into their territory. Did you see him come outside, but a safety came up to hit him and bounced off him like a pinball machine. First down, Banks with a great block for Lee. This is Williams again up the middle, this time not much inside the 45. Timeout Lee with 38 seconds to go. Cooper Elam again on the tackle for Rockwall along with uh, Clark Kiefer. Well, you, you really want to keep the pressure on here, and you know, Coach Owens and staff would really like to put something else on the board. Uh, it's not all a necessity, but you go in already four touchdowns up. You just want to seize and keep the momentum and have something positive happen. Now, uh, Josh Hill, the quarterback, look for Preston Hill, who's the junior backup quarterback who had a great run at times last year, who's been the backup, came in for a short stint against Lufkin, remember. He has been working out at wide receiver. Lee is somewhat thin there. There are a couple of players who are no longer on the football team at wide receiver. They have Simpson and Bush, who are their top two receivers. Jonathan Williams, their third receiver, who's going to be a star for this team, the junior. They're still there, but Preston Hill has been working out at wide receiver during the week, and he does check in here on what is an obvious two, not even a two-minute offense, it's a 38-second offense. And now Preston comes out of the game and John Giles checks back in. Preston was getting all excited. You mean I get to run the thing from wide receiver? I get to catch one for a change. And you know, Josh would probably, how about that? Josh goes, no, I'm not throwing it to you. I'm throwing it to Giles and Simpson and Bush. And not my little brother. Second down and now about seven for Lee at the Rockwall 43. Lee has two timeouts remaining. Shotgun, Josh. Shuttle pass, Tyrone. Breaks a tackle, 40, breaks another one. Is he going to get a first down and stop the clock? He does. He got out of a shoestring tackle, and Josh Renfro makes the stop. But again, on the play of nine yards on the little flip pass to Tyrone, it's a first down and timeout, Robert E. Lee. We're back in 60 seconds on KTBB. <laughs> Hello? Now 30, well, is this a 60? Just, just a, yeah, yeah just a 30. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> okay. 28 seconds to go, first half. Go, Lee with the first out of the Rockwall 34-yard line. They have one timeout remaining, and now, Randy, what you'd like to do is be able to get the ball to the sideline, look for a play here somewhere on the Lee sideline this way. I saw them running their two-minute drill during practice on Thursday when they were going up uh, to kind of have a little walkthrough. Hey, uh, Preston Hill does check in at wide receiver. He will split to the near side with Williams. Walter Simpson is on the far side, and Bush is in the slot. They've got some good weapons out there, and Jason Williams, the up back, with Josh Hill in the slot. Preston now in motion. Takes the shotgun snap, Josh. Back to throw. Now goes sideline, and he overshoots his intended receiver at the 23-yard line, and that was Preston Hill's brother, who couldn't go up the ladder, and Josh has really got tremendous zip on his ball. Fires it over the head of Preston Hill is now second down. Yeah, Preston runs in motion and then he cuts up from the slot and just runs a 10 yard out pattern straight towards the sideline and his brother finds him just, just a little bit over his uh, outstretched arm. Lots of receivers to look to, but you gotta give Rockwall credit because they had everybody, at least it appeared to be covered based on what we can see in a short amount of time. They'll break that down on film later on. Now, Williams, Bush, and Hill to the near side. Josh in the shotgun, takes a snap. Rolls to his right, looks sideline, throws, pass, caught Williams inside the 10 and has a first down with 13 seconds to go. Lee needs to get up to the line of scrimmage and then spike it, or do they take a timeout? Yeah, Williams gets up and signals timeout along with Preston Hill. Boy, they had the clock stopped. You can go down and spike it with 13 seconds left and keep the timeout. What a nice catch by jo John Williams, by the way, but a gun again from Josh, 27 yards and first and goal. And he has just got so much on his passes. Williams does a great job, runs a straight-up pattern, then makes a curl in, and as soon as he turns, the ball's headed at his jersey. He just snags it out of the air, and uh, the, the passing game is clicking right now for Lee. He's got 141 yards. He is 5 of 8 passing for 141 yards, and 
Tyrone has got 65 of it. John Williams, 27. Simpson, one for 17. And Giles has two catches for 32. Spreading the well. And uh, with 13 seconds to go in the half, even though Lee used their final timeout, you would think most everything is going into the end zone anyway. And so you can have maybe three passes or three plays from what is the rock wall just inside their seven yard line. Hey, don't forget this game rebroadcast our audio from KTVB on Cox Communications Channel 18 or 62 Monday and Tuesday night next week starting at 7 o'clock. Tony Bush and Jonathan Williams split receivers. It's Bush and Simpson far side, Williams near side, and Jason Williams the up back. And John Giles in the slot as well. From the rock wall seven, Josh back to throw. Rolls to the near side. He's going to try to run it at the five, inside the five, and he hit the pylon, touchdown. Kyle Rutherford, the official, ruling the touchdown as the ball hit the pylon, and Rod Taylor on the shot at the goal line, Craig Smoke. Yeah, it's a shot, all right. Rod Taylor with a big hit in the one yard line, but Josh does a great job of extending his right arm with the ball in his hand and just hits the pylon for the touchdown. Seven yard scramble from Josh Hill, and even had they not ruled it the touchdown, he was knocked out of bounds. Five seconds would have been left here in the first half. 34 nothing, Robert E. Lee, and here comes Hill now with the extra point. Very nice job of recognizing that he had room to run. Here's Josh, extra point is good. Five seconds to go in the half, and we're coming up here in a moment with the Kid Jones halftime report right here on KTBB, but back with the ensuing kickoff in 60 seconds. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Represent your team like never before. On the field, on the court, it's all in our store. The spirit of your team, the season of your dreams. Looking for the victory, we've got what you need. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Man, are we going to take every lap full speed? Yeah! Are we going to trade paint without fear? Yeah! Are we going to brush our hair 100 times a day and condition after every shampoo and choose the right hair color to match our skin tone? Tim? Terry, I'm an autumn. I'm a spring. Now let's go out there and win one! Super Pets, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Hello, my name is Donna Duncan. I am a teacher at Robert E. Lee High School. I teach English 3 and English 4 and am Dean of the School of Government Law and Communication. I have taught and worked for TISD for 27 years and you're watching TISD Football on Cox. Thirty-five to nothing, Robert E. Lee, and they score again, Randy. Six plays, 83 yards, and a grand total of 57 seconds, and it's capped off with a Josh Hill touchdown run. Here comes the little pooch kick, and Robert E. Lee will try to chase down the rock wall receiver. They do it about the 32-yard line. It has been all Robert E. Lee, 35 nothing, and Craig Smoke with Lee coach Mike Goes. Craig? Coach Owens, first off, talk a little bit about your offense. Tyron Ross, a good four touchdowns. Josh Hill with a great run score in the rushing TD there to put you up five touchdowns. Talk a little bit about their play so far. Well, you know, they're playing well. They're playing well. We need some more intensity, though. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about that. We're not playing with high octane. Defense is playing pretty well, so I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with the first half. But we got to come out the second half and play uh, tougher. Rockwell has only been able to get into your territory one time so far. Your team got back stripling, they got back skates, and they got back Van Zandt. Do you feel like your defense has that chemistry they had in the first two games this season? Well, I, I think so, but you know we haven't we've been taking them out pretty regular. You know we don't want to you know blow them up again. So uh, we're playing a lot of those same guys that we played uh, you know two weeks ago. It's just they're playing better. And you know, and Rockwall's offensive line is not uh, Utah Trinity's offensive line, so there's a you know there's a big difference right there. Up 35 at halftime. What is your policy? How do you plan to use your starters in the second half? How long will you keep them in? Well, we'll keep the we'll always come out and, and give them opportunity the first possession. 
uh, to see what they can do because we don't want to send the wrong message. We still got a whole half to play. All right, thanks, Kevin. Thank you very much, Craig Smoke with Mike mm -hmm. Owen. It is 35 to nothing. Robert Lee over Rockwall, and we're back with our Kid Jones halftime report after this on KTBB. You know what I like about Texas? We'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Here's a question. If you needed your insurance, who would you call? Not the name of the company, but the name of the person. You've got two seconds. Coming up blank, you may want to consider Allstate. You'd have a local agent you can count on, a licensed professional whose name you know, not just a number. You deserve a relationship with a real person. For all your insurance needs, call the McIntyre Insurance Agency in the Albertson Shopping Center. I am the king of home entertainment, or the uh, Archduke at least. Because I have Cox Digital Cable, Cox has more high-def choices than ever before. And nearly all the high-def programming is free. How cool is that? Cox has great movies and sports programming in high-def. Plus an interactive program guide that helps you find what you want, when you want. All with no equipment to buy or long-term contract required. You just can't get all that with satellite. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in viewing a spectacular halftime show presented to you by Robert Ely High School. We invite you to sit back and enjoy the incredible Southern Bell Drill Team and the fabulous Red Raider Band.
Rivers would proudly present the Fire Rugby League, the Red River Marching Band. And now on the field, the actual head drum major Adrian Jones, assistant drum major Brian Kelly, and Mondale Alua, our field conductor David Meeks, the Red Raider Band presents part of the 2004 contest show entitled Waterworks. Tonight's selections include Ram, Tears, and Rapids. Written by Daniel Montoya Jr., the Red Raider Band proudly presents Waterworks.
You know what I like about Texas? We'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. I'm Aura Taylor, and I've been with TISD for more than three decades, and you're watching TISD Football on Cox Communications. Second half kickoff, Rockwall kicks off to Robert E. Lee. Rockwall won the toss, Randy, and elected to receive. It was three and out, and uh, then after that, it was an onslaught of Tyrone, Ross, and Lee. And what's interesting, Tyrone has scored four touchdowns in this game, runs of 1, 10, and 24 yards, and the 57-yard screen pass that went the distance as well. But overall, he has 60 yards on 10 carries because Lee has had such great field position and or getting big chunks in the passing game. The balanced attack, 141 yards rushing and 141 yards passing. That's the way you would write the perfect prescription. And that's the way Coach Owens' uh, teams do it, too, you know. And, uh, with any kind of pace tonight, uh, to keep the starters in the game, just get, keep that balance going, and that, that's what they look for week in, week out. And they normally get it. So now Rockwall will kick off from the east side of the end zone high kick not very deep and this is Peyton Price at the 20 25 30 and Lee will start at around the 30 yard line up front for Lee Saron Black Sam Banks Blake Larman Brian Culp and uh, Matt Holland we also see quite a bit of Andrew Bailey Ryan Davenport and Stephen Christian the tight end Jonah Murphy or John Giles who also lines up in the H back quite a bit Wide receivers, Jonathan Williams, Walter Simpson, Tony Bush, and we have seen a sneak peek of Preston Hill at wide receiver. Peyton Price, the fullback, Tyrone Ross, the deep back, and Josh Hill, the quarterback, and Jason Williams, I think, will start this series as the tailback for Lee as they take over at the 31-yard line, up by 35. This is the stretch play, Jason Williams, left tackle, lead block, Sam Banks breaks another one, bounces outside and close to a first down, and he has it. Run out of bounds by Cephalou, and Sam Banks and Saron Black, the human island, leading the way for Lee in a gain of 11 yards to start the second half. And Williams does a great job of shedding two or three tacklers after he picks up the initial five or six and just keeps bouncing it outside using a stiff arm, and he does a splendid job and a great run. Jason Williams. So Jason Williams picks up 11 yards on first down for Robert E. Lee, and they have the ball at their 42-yard line. We will try to update you on the status in Mesquite on those lightning delays in those two games at Hanby and Memorial. This is a play up the middle. Peyton Price breaks a tackle, chugs down inside the 45 of Rockwall, and Josh Renfro, the only one there. Otherwise, that's a 60-yard touchdown run down to the 39-yard line, a gain of 18 yards for Robert E. Lee. Well, he does a great job. Misdirection, it really didn't work too often, except for one or two plays, but he gets it this time, finds a hole right behind the center, and takes off to the right side and just runs very hard, and it takes several 
Yellow Jackets to bring him down. Peyton Price has busted that play now a couple of times in a row after they shut it down early on. Brad Royal, the offset eye fullback. Jason Williams, the deep back, and he goes right up the gut. Has a couple of three down inside the 35, and Robert E. Lee at the 34-yard line. Sam Banks has had a heck of a game tonight, and he has to be somebody we think about as the player of the game that's brought to you by Dusty Rhodes Marine on Highway 155 South in Tyler, and, of course, Highway 69 South in Lufkin, gain of five. Well, he just does a great job pulling, does Banks. On any kind of stretch play or any kind of run outside, you can see number 50 barreling ahead with his great speed and strength to make clearing blocks, pancake blocks. Just too. a minute and a half into the third quarter, Robert E. Lee up 35 to nothing. Josh, stretch play, Jason bounces outside, 30-yard line. Oh, he does not get there. Nice play by the safety that time. Renfro, I think, again. And uh, as Everett Riley, the 6'1 senior, as Jason then this didn't kind of explode that time. He was waiting for something to open, which is good about a running back being patient, but he only got a yard. Well, it takes three or four white shirts for the opposition to really string the play out to give them credit and the safety, uh, Riley coming up and making a nice stop. Murphy and Williams check out for Lee. Simpson split far side. Giles, the tight end of the near side. Straight eye formation, T.Y. They run the fullback, Royal up the middle. He has a first down, keeps fighting inside the 30 down to the 24-yard line. Everett Riley, another safety with a stop. And on the first five or six plays of this half, it has been the safety or corners making the stop that time for Rockwell in a gain of six and first down. Nice surge up front for the red-clad Red Raiders getting a good push off the ball. Royal running very hard, keeping his shoulders down, his head up and he plows through for a big pickup and another first down for Lee. Hey, he's a load at six foot 193, had a great off season. Brad now with four carries for 25 yards on the year, got eight there. First and 10 Lee, tight end Giles, right in the middle of the field, Josh bobbles the snap, and he and Banks both land on it, outside the 25 yard line of the loss of two yards. So Lee may be changing their ways when it comes to fumbles. They've always, it's just been a very bad ratio. It's almost been weird, kind of strange. They recovered a fumble in the first half, and they recovered their own right there. Well, they come in at minus two on the season. That's two more giveaways that they've given to the opposition. And, uh, you know, that kind of happened in Lufkin where they had the four or five turnovers kind of mounted up. And they again. got the first one in that game too, remember? Yep, yep. They, they got the first one in that game on Javorski, just kind of like letting it on the ground. So second down 12, Simpson far side, Giles is the H block, H back on the left side. Offset on, Josh Tyrone, oh that's Williams, breaks a tackle, 25, runs over the corner at the 20, down to the 18 yard line, tough run from Jason Williams, Cephalo on the stop for Rockwall along with Riley, but he got nine yards at second, now third down at about three. He breaks through the initial push of the Rockwall defense and then juts outside and is uh, does a great job of stringing the play on out and give credit on the far side of the field with Cephalo on the tackle. Jason Williams, the deep back, Brad Royal, the fullback, straight eye formation, third and about three at the 17 yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Giles in motion, Royal up the gut, not much there. I don't think he got to the 15. That time Cooper Elam on the stop as Rockwall does a nice job. Pretty vanilla play right there on third and three. And I don't think he got anything. It brings up fourth down and three. Well, this is four down territory for Coach Owens and staff and uh, probably look for them to go outside here and string the play out again where they've had great success picking up anywhere from five to ten yards most any time they run the ball towards the edges. And Mark Elam, the head coach at Rockwell in his seventh year, hoping his team come up with anything positive. They thought they had a nice drive, which they did in the end of the first half, but it ended up in the turnover. So fourth down and two and a half for Robert E. Lee just outside the Rockwall 15-yard line with Jason Williams as the lone back. H-back is Giles, tight end this way. Josh, stretch play, Jason Williams bounces outside and he will not make it. Nice job by Rockwall. Grant Abston makes the stop for Rockwall and Robert E. Lee had a very nice drive and they got kind of conservative right there as they work on the running play and Rockwall stops them on downs. It's first down, Yellow Jackets at their 17 yard line. He credited the Rockwall defense with stretching the play out and not allowing the, the running back to get around the edge. Just a fantastic job by Abston reading the play and coming up as a nice run stop. So 7 4 to go third quarter. And Rockwall brings Eskridge the quarterback. Tanner and Taylor the wide receivers. Mathis will start at the eye formation at the eye back. Lee jumping around. Mathis up the gut. 
goes outside and gets around a cheeky. Gets about seven yards. Nice job by, I think, Micah Johnson to come up and force the play of the cornerback. Up front for Rockwall, Colton White, Ryan Gilmer, Austin Pennington, Derek Fuller, and Josh Steger, the tight end, Daniel Eubanks. And for Lee, it's Sherfield, McKenzie, and Mumphrey. End tackle in. Linebackers are Skates, Bambry, and Van Zandt. Stripling and Mitchell, the safeties, and actually Ajiki is too. Stripling and Mitchell play up on the line of scrimmage. The cornerbacks are Laquette Quet Nicholson and Micah Johnson. Gain of six, second down and four. That's the longest run of the day now for Mathis, who has seven carries for 17 yards. Lee, three-man front. Roll, Eskridge near side. Gets a seam. You know, that play's worked a couple of times on the far side. Jason Stripling and Bambry. Bo Bambry on the stop. Nick Mitchell there, but a gain of five yards and a first down. He just simply keeps the ball and rolls behind the, his two backs who run out in front of him to block. He cuts back in and does pick up the first down for the Rockwall Yellow Jackets. You know, one thing that happens when, you, when you're on top so easily like this, it looks good early. You've had a two-week break. You're going to try to get your starters a lot of time. At the same time, now there's a whistle. And I'm not sure so, that the... wasn't Oh, they're going to measure here at the 27-yard uh, line. Boy, I thought he was a yard or two beyond the sticks. But uh, the uh, officials, Mitch Prater, do want to see if there's a need for a measurement. I think that I think they had already moved the chains, and that's why it looked like it was short. And boy, that's just going to make Mark Elam wonder a little bit more about what's going on. He's already been unhappy about the kick through the back of the end zone, which I think is the right call by Kyle, Kyle Rutherford and uh, the Mitch Prater crew, because you have the option, if you want to, to take it from where it was kicked at. Because, for example, let's say he kicks it from the 35-yard line and goes to the back of the end zone. You might take the safety right. and then force him to kick back to you. Crowd's pretty quiet. I think they're somewhat worn out after the dad's Southern Bells dance. Eskridge, play action, rolls far side. Has time, throws, caught, first down, 40. Midfield. Nice tackle by Ajiki at the 48-yard line, but a nice pickup of 20 yards in the play. And Eskridge took a shot from Skates, I think, after he threw that pass, but a gain of 20 yards and a first down. Well, he he stayed in there, very gutty play from Eskridge, and he found his receiver right behind a defender cutting across the field, makes the connection to him, and Rockwall with their second really big pass play of the game. This Eskridge kid's pretty good. Uh, again, Zach Eskridge is 6'300", and... 81-pound junior, Gabriel Lacey's checked in a defensive tackle for Lee. He had not played too much, but he seems to be the guy that's giving Rockwell some juice on offense at their 48-yard line. Eskridge play action rolls far side. Skates is there, gets around him, now in trouble, and sacked inside the 45. Dominique Van Zandt, but Skate is the one that forced the issue. He came with a blitz again, and Van Zandt gets credit for a sack and a loss of five yards. Well, it really makes Lee dangerous when they have these guys healthy. They're able to shoot the gaps and send the blitzes, and they send a signal, too, that signal being that when we're healthy guys, we can play great defense, and uh, Skates is a leader on that side of the ball, too. Apparently, the two games in Mesquite, because of the lightning delays, are still in delays, still wow. mid-second quarter scores and they have not yet resumed play. Brett Clow now, the uh, senior quarterback back in the game as they come up with second down, and I said they lost five, he lost probably four. With 4.05 to go third quarter, 35 to nothing, Robert E. Lee. Dancing around Van Zandt. Clow takes the snap, quick step, throws pass, should be tipped off, no. Just over the reach of Skates, and now incomplete. Just over the reach of Cole Skates, then Bobby Taylor had his pass broken up by Quet Nicholson. If that thing is a foot lower, Cole Skates scores. Well, he shows his versatility, David. He's out in pass coverage. He comes out to the slot and follows the receiver, and they're playing more of a zone defense as Lee. And uh, a great pass by Eskridge, and just missing it on the swipe was uh, Skates. Bobby Osborne checks in a defensive tackle. Actually, Clow back in the game, the quarterback. He is one of seven. Eskridge is four for four for 70 yards. Third down, 14 here. 3.51 to go third quarter. And this is, you heard somebody in the background mention somebody has been open over the middle, and that was Taylor the last time. Cloud takes the snap, drops back, wants to set up the screen, now wants to look for help, throws, pass, caught, first down, 40, 35. The shutout is in danger as Bobby Taylor goes down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. 
and at that time, a nice job by Clow. Surprised there wasn't too many men downfield or an offensive lineman downfield, but that was a mistake by Quet Nicholson as he did not get a good angle, and Taylor gets down to the 14-yard line. And Nicholson tried to play the football, and he did play the football and misses it, and Taylor gets a hands on it, turns up field, and he's wrestled out of bounds by several lead defenders at the 14. 41 yards on the play from Clow to Bobby Taylor, who does have some speed, and he almost separated himself from the uh, defensive secondary of Lee, but Nicholson that time just took the wrong angle. So first down, shotgun Brett Clow from the Lee 14-yard line. Snap, Clow rolls to the right, in trouble. Now steps up and tries to scramble. He's got all day. 10 inside the five, and he gets down to the goal line and out of bounds inside the one. And he had all sorts of people. Stripling and Skates were right in front of him. He got away from Cordero Mumphrey, but Mumphrey tracks him down and knocks him down inside the Lee one. And a shutout now is in danger of being lost by Robert E. Lee. He gets a great block, too, from Ryan Gilmer, his guard, who sees it. He's going to tuck the ball and run after veering to the right side to throw it. The pressure coming that way from Lee forces him back to the near side of the field. And Gilmer with a nice block, clearing him outside. He's chased out of bounds at the one-foot line. It's a nice drive. Rockwall now has put yep. together two consecutive nice drives. Matt Uzell in the game for Lee. As Rockwall has the big banger, Lawrence. Kendrick Lawrence has the deep back. Clow, that's Eskwich. Quarterback keeper, he will score. Touchdown, Rockwall. And this is going to drive Mike Owens crazy that his team came out somewhat flat here in the second half. And Rockwall takes advantage, and they just went about 80 yards. 83 to be exact. 3.07 to go, third quarter. And it was broken plays the difference in that drive that time, Randy. First of all, in the play to Bobby Taylor on third and long when they let somebody get loose. And then, of course, on that play, the scramble. Here comes the extra point by Longino, who missed one that cost them at least a tie last week and three field goals as well. But I got a story about him in a minute. Jonah Longino. Extra point is up, and it is good. Little prayers to the Longino family. I've been told his father has been in remission with cancer, but there's been a flare-up, and you got to wonder if that hasn't affected this young man. So good luck to Jonah Longino the rest of the year and to the Longino family. 35-7 Lee, up by 28, back in 60 seconds. You know what I like about Texas? We'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Hi, I'm Angie Billings. I have taught at Lee for 11 years. I teach English, and you're watching TISD Football on Cox. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're going to go to clear helmets so our racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on it. And I'm out of here. Fellas, out of your mind. That's not where are you going? Mind. Supercut, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? Back at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium, here's Longino with a kick and a very nice leg. It drives Tony Bush three yards deep in the end zone. Last time he went 97. And look out. If he gets loose, there's a flag down. Out to the 30-yard line, but this is going to be brought back as Lee continues the sloppy second half. And Stewart, Sam Stewart, makes the stop for Rockwall. And this one is going to go back what you think is going to be back to about the 10-yard line if, in fact, it's a block in the back against Robert. They are holding at the 20-yard line. Rockwall does a superb job on their drive, David. Eight plays, 83 yards, and 355 with Eskridge taking it in from one yard out, Zach Eskridge, and Longino with the PAT. Again, Robert E. Lee with the, the penalty that will mark it back inside the 20, down close to the 10. Josh Hill, the senior, who's been very good today. Uh, he's one, two, three, four, five. Six of nine. 
passing in the first half for 141 yards, threw for a touchdown, ran for one as well, and Preston Hill now, the junior, his younger brother, who has thrown just nine passes in this season, four for nine for 86 yards, but has over 1,100 yards in his career. Peyton Price up the middle, looks like a face mask. I think that's a face mask call. You'd think it might be holding, but Rockwall is jacked up, and Robert E. Lee's kind of just moping around here. They cannot lose their edge. I know it's a blowout right now, but you don't want to lose your edge where you lose the momentum into the next week, especially coming off a two-week break. Well, precisely, and that's why you probably need to keep the scar starters in at least through three full quarters. That would be my opinion. But, uh, you know, they, they've got to watch well, out they're the They're in there right now. Play. They yep. got them in there right in now. There now. But again, you never know. 2.48 to go third quarter. You can think Lee does whatever they want offensively, but that last drive kind of ended with some kind of very conservative plays, but they could be working on the running the game running at games, times. Yeah. The Mike Owens, Dowin, Gary Fleet, when these guys put together a game plan, but told by many coaches is as good a scheme as you'll face in high school football. First down five after the five-yard face mask, inadvertent, and Lee at the 15-yard line. Back to throw Preston Hill. Receivers, deep sideline pass, out of bounds intended for Simpson, and he double clutched, and that's a dangerous thing to do because that gives the secondary a chance to recover. Uh, Craig Smoke, you're down in the sideline. Any kind of feedback you're getting from the coaching staff down there? No, you can tell the coaching staff isn't really happy with how they've come out so far. That's been a big problem with Lee sometimes is not being able to come out and get jacked up, and I know it's probably hard for a team up by five touchdowns to come out here and still be as jacked up as they were at the beginning of the game. But really, that's the only problem down here with the coaches right now. Thank you, Craig. On the sideline, Robert E. Lee with a second down five at the 15. Peyton Price, this is a wingback uh, reverse. Jason Williams, not much room to go, and he does stumble out to the 18-yard line. Not much there. Nice job that time by Gabe Rhodes and uh, Grant Abston. We've called him quite a bit. Well, they just do a great job, does rock ball. On, on, from play to play, really getting outside and doing a great job of containment. And Lee's not able to get back inside with Abstin and company leading the way. And Tyron Ross, again, is not out on this series. Third down and two. Jason Williams and Peyton Price in the offset eye, and Preston Hill, the quarterback, with Giles, the tight end, near side. Jason, left tackle, goes outside, has to break a tackle, and he has a first down. Boy, that was, a, again, a job of where he was patient enough to find something and then explodes out to the 22-yard line. Gain of four. Dorsey and Elam on the stop, but it's a first down for Robert E. Lee. Well, Saron Black on the far side leading the way, makes a nice seal back block on the linebacker trying to get to him, and it enables him to find that extra couple of yardage up, yards up front for the burst in the first down. Lee continues to rotate the wide receivers. Tony Bush out, John Williams in. Now under two minutes to go, third quarter, 35-7. to seven. Robert E. Lee up by 28. Williams near side, Simpson far side. Offset eye, play action pass, Preston Hill. Going deep sideline, Williams caught it at the 46 yard line. And th look at the throw. Gain of 22 yards, and Preston Hill threw that thing on a rope and a first down to the 45 yard line. And both the Hill brothers do such a great job of finding one spot to throw the ball to, allowing the receivers to run to it, and just a fantastic job. Nobody else could catch that ball but the intended receiver, and he does. And that was that. John Williams, who now has two catches for 49 yards. He had the big catch last week against, or two weeks ago against Trinity on a very critical moment. Brad Royal comes in at a fullback, and Tyrone Ross is now the, uh, the wing back there. This is when they can fake the stretch play to Williams and go reverse, or they can just give it to Williams, who bounces outside. Tyrone, nice block, midfield, breaks a tackle into Rockwall territory and fumbled the ball. And Rockwall says they have it at the 44-yard line, and Jason continues to struggle with giving up the football. And that was a very good run, a very tough run. There's also a flag down. I think Lee's going to be hit with a holding call. Lee does recover, but there's a flag down back at the line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. Boy, Jason's got to really learn how to hold on to that football. There's a lot of players down in a heap over there as they continue to scramble for the football. The question is, was the hold, if it is a hold, was it on Tyrone Ross who was peeling back on his block he had a good job of controlling the blocker. He was trying to make the tackle and force the play outside. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it's going to be marched back against Lee. Ryan Davenport recovers the fumble for Robert E. Lee. 
at the 42-yard line of Rockwall, but that's irrelevant now. Well, it's not irrelevant because Rockwall would have the football, but Lee then will now have the ball at their 35-yard line. And, you know, I, I, I want to say this because I was able to watch some of the game against Ulysses Trinity, and I think because Lee runs that stretch play so well, I was shown several plays where there were holding calls and I'm not going to dispute whether they were or not, but what it looked like to me is because Lee's offensive linemen and receivers hold their block so well, it seems like the perception might be they're holding. First down and 20. At the 35-yard line, Preston Hill, here comes the blitz. Great block by Royal Sideline. Pass caught Tony Bush midfield, and they got about 15 of it back at second down and four. Just like that, execution is what Lee really bases everything on and they do execute to the sidelines where they've done it more often than not, not throwing the ball over the middle much other than the screen for the touchdown. They're going along the sidelines and really it's a quarterback timing to his receivers has worked well for Lee. 16 yards, Preston Hill, we do know that he's got the big time arm and Josh has the big time arm. What a Randy and Reba of course have last year had that emotional situation where they had to switch, and that's going to end the third quarter right at midfield, and they've handled it so well, and so did Mike Owens, the coach. Into the third quarter, 35-7 Rockwall back in 60 seconds. The Tyler Independent School District employs 2,600 and serves over 17,500 students with a primary mission to ensure the academic success of every student and also is committed to fiscal responsibility, ranking among the top districts in the state for percentage of budget spent on instruction and receiving the prestigious Superior Financial Rating from the Texas Education Agency. We're committed to improvement, not only because it's what the people of Tyler expect, but because it's what the people of Tyler deserve. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. Man, are we going to take every lap full speed? Yeah! Are we going to trade paint without fear? Yeah! Are we going to brush our hair 100 times a day and condition after every shampoo and choose the right hair color to match our skin tone? Tim? Terry, I'm an autumn. I'm a spring. Now let's go out there and win one! Supercuts, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Start the fourth quarter, Lee at the 49-yard line, and there's a flag. Wow. So now second down and eight for Robert E. Lee as somebody moved. And that was the old John Tyler. Just throw it back to the guy behind you and find a little seam. Almost a wing T play. They were uh, showing that for the first time all night. Saw some weird stuff. Mount St. Helens was awakening and uh, semi-eruption. Stephen Ash earlier today. Unbelievable. You had the hurricanes in Florida, and now some earthquakes and an eruption of a volcano up in Washington. Second down. This is Jason Williams. Not much room. Breaks a tackle, though, and nice job again by Renfro. And Lee just not getting much on offense anymore. Third down and about six yards and a gain of three. Just great alignment for Rockwall. They're setting up. If, they, if Lee runs the ball out wide, they're keeping their safeties a little further wide out instead of straight up in the middle of the field, trying to protect against the run and the big play, and uh, they've done a good job of really keeping Lee at bay here in this half. Craig Smoke, uh, you said that uh, this could be a pretty quick fourth quarter, huh? Yeah, I talked to one of the officials, and he said this might be two of the fastest quarters you see played in high school football this year. That is because of the two games that are delayed because of lightning in Mesquite, and they're afraid that that will happen here, so they're going to try to hurry up and get this game over with if possible. Well, and then they throw two flags to start the fourth quarter. Third down and six, and a fumbled snap, and Robert E. Lee has recovered, and another flag comes down. Andrew Bailey and Preston Hill having issues now with the snap, and I'm not so sure if that's a pre-snap penalty. If it is, Lee would have third and 11 instead of third down and six as Davenport, excuse me, Bailey recovered the fumble. And there's 10.59 to go fourth quarter. I do have KTBB.com up, and there is some severe weather 
again, that is coming through the Mesquite area, that is kind of going through DFW. And I'm not trying to be Dr. Bob Peters or anything, but there does seem to be a pretty good sell coming right down I-20 and Highway 80, and that's what they are trying to make sure we avoid with all the people that we have, especially if there's some lightning, especially after what happened earlier this year in Grapevine, Texas. Clock runs under 11 minutes to go, third and 11. Preston Hill, seven step drop, sideline pass, Tony Bush first down at the 40. What a throw, what a nice route by Tony Bush who pushed off his cornerback in a gain of 16 yards in the first down. And they just have the out routes down to, to a tee. Timing is there. As soon as the receiver curls back out and Bush did a great job, 15 yards down the field, turns the ball is coming right towards his numbers and he keeps his ground and makes the catch for Lee. Tony Bush forced the cornerback so far back, 24 Stewart, that he fell down. And Tony just makes the cut at the sideline and a gain of 16 yards. And Preston tonight has three of four for 54 yards. Jason Williams, the deep back, off left tackle, turns the corner, 35, breaks a tackle, 30, 20, to the sidelines, knocked out of bounds at the 14-yard line. That is a very nice, tough run. Walter Simpson with a nice block downfield. But Jason now over 100 yards in this game in a gain of 26 yards, first down lead. He runs through two attempted arm tackles from a linebacker position that time that just couldn't get their hands on him. That would have been uh, Adger Colley, and he just flows right through him and burst outside down the near sideline for another big gainer. So Jason Williams now over 100 yards, 12 carries for 107 yards. And on the year, he's at 338 yards. Tyrone Ross, who has four touchdowns, checks back in the game. And apparently all the resumptions are going to happen up in Mesquite, Texas. Maybe the severe weather's come through there. This is Tyrone outside, gets a seal block at the 10. Down inside the 10, close to the 5, and pushed out of bounds there. And a nice job by Jonathan Williams downfield. Cooper Elam on the stop, who's been all over the place for Rockwall, but a gain of nine for T.Y. And T.Y. just uses that stretch play. That's his gets, first gets, carry of the second half. Yeah, I know, and uh, they, they're really resting him. Uh, really no need for that, but they don't want to run too much up and show too much. But he does that uh, stretch play to a T, falls his blockers, and is able to get outside for a long gain of nine. Nine and a half minutes to go. They uh, Again, he got him out of bounds, but the clock continues to run. Second down and about a yard and a half at about the six of Rockwall. Lee offset eye. This is Brad Royal. He will get into the five down touchdown. Brad Royal has scored his first ever varsity touchdown and he ran over a corner of safety at about the goal line. And a very nice job for Robert E. Lee. Sam Stewart was the one that took the brunt of that play and Brad Royal scores. It is 41-7 Robert E. Lee. Gets the bump play and just blast off right guard. Nice push up front for Lee's offensive line and he just plows through the defender as you mentioned for six. Micah Johnson will get in on the act at extra points. He kicks off now for Lee. He's the starting corner. Preston Hill will hold. He's also a lefty footed. Oh, bad hold. And he got it off. Did he get it through? No. Something went wrong there, and I'm not so sure, but that got pretty dangerous. That thing fell to the ground. Preston tried to reset it. Now he's limping. They have missed about five extra points this year. 9.09 to go, fourth quarter. 41 7, Robert E. Lee back in 60 seconds. You know what I like about Texas? We'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. To see this sign on your house, put this sign out front. Century 21 Advantage. Call or visit our website. Here's a question. If you needed your insurance, who would you call? Not the name of the company, but the name of the person. You've got two seconds. Coming up blank, you may want to consider Allstate. You'd have a local agent you can count on. A licensed professional whose name you know, not just a number. 
You deserve a relationship with a real person. For all your insurance needs, call the McIntyre Insurance Agency in the Albertson Shopping Center. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're going to go to clear helmet so our racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on it. Man, I'm out of here. Fellas, you're out of your mind. That's not where are you going? going? Supercuts, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? 9.09 to go, fourth quarter, 41-7. to seven. Robert E. Lee and Micah Johnson set the kickoff. Ten plays, 90 yards, and 5.08 for Lee. Their longest drive of the uh, year thus far, and Royal takes it in from six yards out. Cephalou at about the 2, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Jeremy Moore there to knock him down at the 38-yard line. There's a scuffle back inside the 20, and Justin Hansen getting involved with a Rockwell player. They'll break it up. Jeremy Moore, the nice job on the kickoff coverage to save what could have been a, a long, long kickoff return. First time that Rockwell's been able to get any kind of return on the kickoffs tonight. 41-7, Robert E. Lee in total command of this game. And again, trying to get some players in, rest some other guys, and also try to stay sharp, if at all possible, for their showdown next week against Longview at Lobo Stadium. Eskridge, fullback up the middle, nothing there. And James Wilson, big number 82, is starting to play more and more. And Lance Heap there as well, and a gain of just a yard for the fullback. Well, Lee's defense uh, coming out to play again. They're not going to give up a lot of ground. And, of course, Rockwall in their last two drives have been successful, going 60 yards in nine plays and not scoring, and then eight plays, 83 yards on their last drive. There's now been a game called, not in 12-5A, but a game between Waco, Midway, and Athens has been called because of bad weather. It will give you a score. Here's Eskridge. This should be a pick. Micah Johnson, oh, he dropped it at about the 35. But he, that time, was in great position on Tanner, and he just couldn't come down with it, and it's now third down and nine. That's what makes him such a dangerous cover corner, because he plays like a wide receiver. Yes, he does. And he's got more speed than most of these wide outs for Rockwall, and he beats a uh, wide, wide receiver on that play to the ball by several yards. He just can't hold on to it at the end. Waco midway, 44, Athens seven, game called due to weather. It was already pretty much over anyway. Third and nine, Clow now in the shotgun. Kendrick Lawrence is the up back. Four wide receivers set, three far side. Clock, 8.19 to go after the incomplete pass. Lee jumping around, and now James Wilson jumps off sides, and that should be a, uh, a five-yard procedure call against Steger. Initially, Lee jumped, but they did not cross the neutral zone, and then about the time Wilson did, the right tackle moved, and that should be procedure, unless they're in a giving move. Oh, my goodness. No way. Offsides against Robert E. Lee. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I saw the, the guys in the middle move. did not cross the neutral zone. You're allowed to ja jump around, and if you do cross the neutral zone, then they move. It is a penalty. But Williams Wilson then moved in the right tackle move, but Wilson was not in the neutral zone. It's third down and four. So Robert E. Lee with the penalty. And Rockwall, third down and four at the 44-yard line. Clow in the shotgun. Straight drop, pass sideline, caught first down. Nicholson there on the stop. That's Bobby Taylor with another get, grab, and he's had a nice night gain of 11 yards. Well, Rockwell's had success on several occasions with that uh, exact play, just running their wide out five yards and curl back in or a turn out, and the quarterback puts it right in his number. Four catches for Taylor for 42 yards. He's a good receiver. He looks like he's a good possession receiver and is also very good at breaking tackles once he makes the catch. Lead 47-yard line. Here comes Heap on the blitz. Now he backs off. And backside blitz, he got it. Trevor Reed with a sack that time. And Cloud had never saw him. He was so worried about Heap on the near side. He lost the backside pressure, and Lee gets their fifth sack of this game. Wow, and it came, and he, he saw the man coming towards him, but he never saw the backside. And just a great bum rush from Lee's defensive linebackers on the play. They now have five sacks in this game. Second down, 15 under seven minutes by the time they take the snap. Fourth quarter, 41 to seven. 
Robert E. Lee. Warren DeHaven has checked in the game at middle linebacker for Lee. Here's Kendrick Lawrence up the middle, and he got stuffed right there at midfield after a gain of a couple of yards. And Matt Uzel, who got better and better and better during that Trinity game, he initially a lot of his tackles were six, seven, eight yards downfield. And Randy, by the end of the game, was starting to get closer to the line of scrimmage, gaining confidence of what he's doing. And DeHaven comes right back off the field as he's in that last tackle. Just kind of get a field tonight, I believe, is what he's after. I think they're just trying to get that ankle loosened up a little bit, get a little warm. In, inside the blood flow. Third down, 13. Clow in the shotgun from right at midfield. Takes the shotgun. Here comes pressure. In trouble. Gets away from Colby Ray. Flag is down. Over the middle, incomplete. Takarian Cuba with a nice job in coverage. And then after the play, George Favor rolled Clow. And it looks like uh, the intended receiver got his incomplete, but there's a flag down. And Clow wants to know where he is right now because he took an after-the-throw shot from George Favor. Well, Kobe Ray does a great job of forcing the quarterback out of the pocket immediately and just dives after him and misses. And uh, well, he did take a punishing hit as numerous flags went flying. 6-14 remaining. Uh, Hallsville crushing Whitehouse in the fourth quarter, 47 to nothing. Mitch Prater is not in a hurry, holding against Rockwall, face mask against Robert E. Lee. Offsetting call, it will remain third down and long. Get the third down play over, does Rockwall, so they catch a small break. Lee next week will be at Lobo Stadium. I'll do the show from there and then Sports talk, and then we have the game. We've seen some great ones at that place between Lee and Longview. Some of Lee's best wins have been at Lobo Stadium. Remember, Cody Skates had a huge game one time. Last year's come from behind victory. Back to throw. Eskridge in trouble. They get him. Nope, escapes. Now comes this way. Wilson's got him, and so do two or three other Red Raiders. James Wilson, and that's a big loss back inside the 45. Faber and Tre Trevor Reed were there, and Jacoby McKenzie as well, lost of six yards. Well, Lee just sends the pressure, and Eskridge really kind of loses it. He stops looking down the middle of the field once uh, there's a red shirt or two around him, and he just did a good job breaking a tackle or two before he's wrapped up in another sack, number six. Is six wow. sacks now, Lee. Right now. Uh, Dominique Van Zandt has one. Mumphrey has one and a half. Trevor Reed has one and a half. Van Zandt has one and a half, and a lot of others have a little bit of third and a half. Here's a high punt, and Lee's going to let it hit at the 25, and bounce take a backwards roll back to the 27-yard line. Tony Bush has kind of got into the mode of letting that thing hit the ground tonight. 29-yard punt, and that might have been more because he was back. Remember the first punt outside the bad snap? The first punt, he bombed one, and Tony kind of gave him a lot of uh, respect. Hey, the Astros have won tonight, 4-2. to 29-yard punt by Longino and Lee will try to run this thing out with 5-16 to go up by 34. That's a great win for the Astros. Man, they, they have been they're on set fire. Up right Unbelievable. Yep. You know, they, they caught everybody. Here's a stretch play. Brad Royal for about five. They caught everybody, and then they kind of went into a funk, and then they caught everybody again, and the Cubs are in a free fall. So they're two up on the Cubs with two to play. Not sure what the Giants are doing tonight, but the Giants and Astros started the night tied in that Central or in that National League wild card. And the Giants are playing the Dodgers to in the in the series. They've got a chance to win the West, but they're going to need a sweep. And the Astros playing all three of these games at home yeah, against Colorado. Against Colorado, what kind of a veteran team? And there's nothing worse than a veteran team out of the race in September, or as we say, October 1st. Brad Royal now the deep back for Lee. He's had a nice night. Scored his first ever touchdown. Takes the fullback trap and keeps on chugging for about four more out to the 37-yard line, under four and a half to go. Randy, let's talk about Longview. You saw them a couple of weeks ago. I saw them last week, too. And you saw them against Evangel. I've seen them three times. What do you think? Uh, they, 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 they have speed to the outside. They, you know, they've got their usual cast of skilled people with Kelly and Vondrell McGee at running back, and the quarterback is shifty. Uh, he runs a little bit of option, which uh, killed him. He yeah. got, got Lee on that last yeah. year. That little quick just kind of just took it and, up behind uh, the line. They have a weakness, though, in their secondary up the middle. I, I think Lee will try to exploit that. We'll talk about that. Third of the yard, Lee at their 37. Under four minutes to go, up 41-7. to seven. And here's a flag down. Somebody is moving in a pre-snap way that I just don't know what they're doing. Michael Mason. 
also in the game for Robert E. Lee, and it's nice to see Justin Watts in the game. Justin, like Martel Van Zandt, hearing impaired. Tyler Fleet in the game, all sorts of uh, players getting a chance here as the clock runs out. Four minutes to go, a little less than that. Preston Hill, quarterback bootleg. Has a man open, that is Murphy, that's Fleet. 45, first down, runs over a defensive back, Cephalou, down to the 44, and Tyler Fleet has picked up his first ever varsity reception tonight, down to the Rockwall 44-yard line, and you know Gary and Brenda have to be pretty happy. Yeah, they do, and he, he's got long arms and long legs. He makes the catch and turns around and finds a defender to hit just like his daddy would, and he plows over him for a gain of 24. Yeah, his daddy taught him <laughs> if you're ever open, find somebody to run into because that's what offensive linemen do, and he's an extension of that at tight end. That was a very well-designed play and gives Lee a first down with under three minutes to go. So Brad Royal is first ever touchdown and Fleet's first ever catch. Preston Hill, stretch play, Brad Royal for a couple of yards. In the game for the first time, 21 for Robert E. Lee. And Devron Parchment. And a gain of a couple for Brad Royal. Getting everybody into the act. And uh, you can hear the sideline a moment ago, too. They can say, Fleet, go Fleet. Way to hit him, Fleet. Uh, he did a fantastic I think that, job. I think that was Gary going, yeah, might have been his dad. hit somebody. Get down, boy, get him. Brenda's going, get out of bounds, honey, get out of bounds. <laughs> Of course, Tyler Fleet, one of like 800 names Tyler on this Lee football team. And I think I wrote that down a couple of games. I got, the mom has got on me a little bit because I didn't know all the right Tylers, and I'm going to get that to you in a second. That's what we're resorting to here with two minutes to go. Tyler Owens, Tyler Fleet, Tyler Huffstickler is a younger kid, and he's a freshman, I think. Tyler Reed, a young player, and here comes Royal for about four. And Tyler Pirtle, Mike, the baseball coach's son. Gain of three for Royal as Lee tries to run this thing out with a minute 50 to go. It's third down and five. And there used to be, there was another Tyler somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That, that and there's a Tyler hurt. on this team here. There's a Tyler in, on, on the uh, Rockwall. It's a popular team. name born in the late 80s, that's for sure. And wow, That name, Pirtle, what rings a bell with me in Pine Tree lore. They, that family's been great over there. His brother, years. Terry, was a great baseball oh, player down at Sam Houston State. Yep. Third down and six. Robert E. Lee with now a minute 20 to go as they try to run this thing out up by 41-7. Royal lone setback, takes the handoff from Hill, goes up the middle, and gets a couple of yards. Mark Elam's got to be happy because his football team battled back in the fourth, third and fourth quarters, but Lee did get rather vanilla in the second half. They don't want to show too much in a game that could be a shootout next week at long fourth down as Royal gets about a yard. Tally on the stop for Rockwall. Now they're just trying to run out the string now, and uh, if they can get one more first down, that'll end it, and uh, Rockwall will at least get another series out in the field nonetheless. It's probably. Tyrone Ross with not quite a Jerome Bez, three carries, one yards, and three touchdowns. 11 carries, 69 yards, four touchdowns. One of those, of course, was the passing play. Preston Hill, quarterback, bootleg. He wants to throw it, caught. First down, Mason at the 30, down to the 25-yard line. His first ever varsity reception. Michael Mason on a gain of 13 yards with 22 seconds to go, down to the Rockwall 25. Yeah, well, that'll stop the clock, so they'll have time to Probably will take one more running play to end this one and uh, get on out of town. 13 yards on the play, too, Dave. Preston Hill, 13 yards to Mason. We got some guys we hadn't written down. That was a busted play because Hill went back to fake the ball on a play action. Nobody was there to fake it. And there's no need to run the clock or to run another play as Robert E. Lee jumped all over Rockwall, their first offensive play after the bad snap and the punt. And Tyrone started off a big night, his first of four touchdowns. And Robert E. Lee has beaten Rockwall 41 to seven. Final score, Robert E. Lee 41 and Rockwall seven. And that sets up a Lee, first of all, breaking their two game losing streak. Second of all, they're one and oh in district play. And now Robert E. Lee is in a position to get set up for the game with the Longview Lobos. And Craig Smoke will get Mike Owens here in just a moment after the coaches shake hands in the first ever meeting between Rockwall and Robert E. Lee. And here's Craig Smoke with Mike Owens. Talking to Bill Bryant, the offensive coordinator at first, who was a coach at center, as we told you about, and Mike knows him. Now here's... Here's Mike. Coach Owens, a pretty quick second half, but you're able to get a lot of valuable experience for guys that don't usually get a lot of time to play. 
Yeah, I, uh, that's good. Whenever we get a chance, we're kind of thin, though. At uh, you know, at some positions, we don't have a whole lot of people to put in. I know your defense would have liked to get the shutout, but seven points isn't bad, especially in the district opener. Your defense had six sacks tonight. How do you feel about the way they played? Well, they played a lot better. I mean, that's more like what we want to play. You know, and that's the way it's going to have to be. Now, next week, we're going to play a whole lot better football team, I think, than what we just saw. So it's going to be a struggle, I can tell you. Speaking of that, you're mentioning Longview, and a lot of people around the state of Texas are going to be looking at that game very closely. Talk about what areas you feel that your team needs to work on this week in preparation after seeing the way y'all played tonight. Well, I think there's a lot of areas where we've got to improve, and I think that you know we'll get to Haven back next week. And you know we played a little bit tonight, but we'll get him back next week, and so I think we should be a lot better defensively next week. Our secondary did a much better job tonight than what they've done, and so I was real, real pleased with the way they played. I appreciate it. Coach. Thank you, uh, Craig, with Mike Owens. We'll also come back with the Dusty Rhodes Marine, KTBB Scholastic All-Stars player of the game as our post-game report continues in a moment. And Craig Smoke with a couple of player interviews. As we come back, 41-7, Robert E. Lee wins by 34. When our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Man, are we going to take every lap full speed? Yeah! Are we going to trade paint? Without fear. Yeah! Are we going to brush our hair 100 times a day and condition after every shampoo and choose the right hair color to match our skin tone? Tim? Terry, I'm an autumn. I'm a spring. Now let's go out there and win one! Supercuts, proud sponsor of this Bradshaw Racing. To see this sign on your house, put this sign out front. Century 21 Advantage. Call or visit our website. Thanks for watching High School Football. Presented by TISD and Cox Communications of Tyler. Brought to you by Dairy Queen. And Supercuts. Also brought to you by these sponsors. Car shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Represent your team like never before. On the field, on the court, it's all in our store. The spirit of your team, the season of your dreams. Looking for the victory, we've got what you need. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics.
Thanks for watching High School Football. Presented by TISD and Cox Communications of Tyler. Brought to you by Dairy Queen and Supercuts. Also brought to you by these sponsors. You know what I like about Texas? We'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas.